Welcome to The Mischief, I'm Valen and this is Feywild, where some biomes have seasonality and are filled with pixie mischief. It adds in a light questing mechanic, a new ore, some characters, and a great atmosphere with a whole bunch of little compatibility bonuses too. You will need a couple mods installed for this to work, and that's Patchouli and Gecko Lib. but besides that, you should be good to go. So how does one start in the Feywild? Well, besides just running around and exploring things, there's a couple options. One is to open up your achievements, and it kind of gives you a little bit of a guide there. But for something a bit more specific, if you're set up for it, you should start with a little guidebook. And if not, well, look for a library. They're not too difficult to find. It's not like they're over-spamming the landscape or anything, but they're really cool structures that have multiple floors and lots of information. This is where it showcases some of its compatibility options. If you have a few other magical inspired mods installed, then you might also be able to check out of the library one of its instruction manuals. For free, of course, which is pretty darn cool. I mean, it is a public library, but be careful, some of the locals may not be as eager to share things as the librarian is. Oh, and speaking of librarian, don't spam them, you'll regret it. So with that book in hand, if you follow it and the achievements, you should be able to piece together what it is that you need to do, but that's not what you're here watching the video for. I can help you with that. Most importantly, explore. You really need to look around and find out what is out there in the world. You'll find lots of new biomes. Specifically, there's four seasonal biomes that you need to watch out for, each themed in the appropriate season, spring, summer, autumn, and winter. Now, in each one of these, you're going to find lots of magical trees and some magical creatures, specifically pixies. You're going to want to watch out for them. They can be very mischievous, but they can also be friendly as well. If you want to uh, have a little bit of fun, offer them a cookie. Now, if the pixies aren't exactly your best friends, you can always kill them and obtain the drops you would get from that. But besides that, be sure to harvest a few of the trees in the area because you'll be getting some very valuable drops from those as well. Now. That's not to say that that's the only way to progress in this mod, but it is definitely some ways that you can get some of the materials that you will likely later on need. Specifically, mandrakes. You're going to want to get these little curiosities that grow in an extremely cute way uh, as they progress through their growth cycle. You'll want to use these for some ingredients later on. But uh, don't stick one of these little squirming guys in your mouth. Uh, you'll, you might regret that too. Now if you're in these seasonal biomes during the nighttime, you'll want to watch out though because they're a bit more dangerous than they might normally be. Though they will look prettier because each one has their own individual light sources, you may run into other mobs like conjurers, witches, or undead villagers depending upon the seasonal biome that you're in. Now beyond that, you're probably also going to want to start mining uh, so that you can at least protect yourself if not get some valuables. And as you're mining, you'll find some new ores. These gems can be used to, well, upgrade other gems eventually, but for now your resources are going to be very limited. You're going to want to collect as many of these as you possibly can. They're very important for progression through this mod. Now you can smelt them for dust, but you can also get the dust from the trees and from, well, slaughtering innocent pixies. Now in your travels you may find a cave dwarf, or you may end up finding a blacksmith location you can trade with him, just like you would with a regular villager. If you trade with him often enough, you won't see the usual villager trading progress bar. Instead, you'll see particles like you would in older Minecraft, and that means that he's offered some new ones. You're going to want to keep doing that. If you've run out of trades and he hasn't leveled up enough, you can wait until the next day. You should be able to refresh and repurchase these items until you can level him up to a high enough level that he might trust you to offer you a contract. Now with that contract, you can then spawn your own dwarf. Now if you haven't already procured a dwarven anvil from a blacksmith area, you can always make one. They're not too expensive and it's pretty handy, but you're going to want to click your contract on the anvil and that will generate this new dwarfy friend. And with that, uh, you will be able to get access to even better trades, uh, more specifically important ones that you will need in order to progress in the mod. With these new trades, you can upgrade your gems to even better versions take a whole bunch of smaller ones and upgrade them to the next level. And you can keep doing this until you get some really high quality ones. Why would I need this? Well, you can use it to make a Fey Altar. Or, alternatively, you can find a Fey Altar 
in a very rare seasonal biome structure. These are called world trees, and each season has their own. It does have some content that is not currently released as of yet, namely the rulers of each of these areas are not there, but you do have access to the altar, you can take it with you, and you can use it as you like. If you haven't found one of these, you can always make them with one of those trades that you get from your dwarven friend in a schematic form. Now with these schematics, the, the, the anvil itself works really interesting. If you have an anvil, you have a dwarf, you have access to even better ways of upgrading your gems rather than through the regular trades the dwarf has to offer. You can actually put the items in here and a schematic and it will upgrade your gems for a much better rate. On top of that, you can use it to make a fey altar, just in case you didn't end up coming across one in your exploration throughout the world. Now if you need to power this anvil, don't be afraid to put in a bunch of dust as you're going to want that as that will power up the mana in that magical anvil for the dwarf to do the job. Now just having this anvil isn't enough, you'll have to have a contract with the dwarf. Now, to progress further and get into the questing part of this, you're going to want to make a summoning scroll and choose which faction you'd like to join. And by faction, it's more or less which season do you really want to be associated with, whether it be spring, summer, autumn, or winter. In your patchouli book, it should give you a little bit of details as to the different recipes for these. JEI is highly recommended. It will definitely help you through this. Uh, as a mod that kind of gives you some descriptions as well. But you should be aware that each different seasonal pixie friend that you decide to associate with will potentially offer you lots of different powers. Now keep in mind that in the future there will be seasonal wars in this mod, there is not currently, so you'll want to choose wisely. At the current time you feasibly could have one of each of these pixie seasonality friends. Now let's say we start with my favorite, and that you would think would be winter with a name like Velen Frostweaver, but actually it's autumn. I like this little mushroom laden little girl, and she is going to help me out. I have spawned her in, you click on her, and she'll give you some kind of quest. She'll talk to you and give you a little bit of information and some clues as to how to make her a much happier pixie and potentially to give you some benefits. And once I've satisfied these quest requirements, uh, in the end you'll know that you've reached the current end of the quest line, which will likely be expanded in the future, when she gives you three saplings and says to plant things and make it more like home. Any one of the pixies is going to end up with this quest as its current final quest. This may change in the future. But just know that that's where the end is currently. And once you've done this and you've gone through a lot of different quests and such, each different pixie will grant you different special benefits and powers. Most likely if you're nearby though. For example, the autumn one that I have, she will cast Speed 3 and Wind Walk on you for a minute. This is really, really nice, especially if she's around your base. Now these pixies, they won't despawn and they'll stay generally in about a 10 to 15 block radius of where you spawn them. So when you click the contract on the ground, be sure that it's in an area you want them to be. They can still suffocate in certain areas, so you'll want to keep it in an open area. It's really nice to have these effects, because if I have wind walk and some mobs come nearby, they'll get pushed away, which is really, really nice. And the speed three is just excellent for getting around. If I decided to choose a different pixie, or I just decided I wanted to explore some of the other seasonalities, I don't have to start a new game. I can drink a mandrake potion. Now this will allow me to forget my allegiance. <laughs> this being the Feywild, things work a little bit weird here. And all you need to do is forget that you're allied with somebody, and you can summon a new pixie. So with that, I can choose something like Spring. And with this curious, very big time mischief maker, she, if you please her enough, will breed animals easily for you. And she can quickly make a large herd of most livestock in the area. If I go with the Summer Pixie, she will smite monsters. Uh, she does not like monsters at all. She's a very combat oriented one and currently one of the more dominant uh, seasonal critters that there are out there. Now if you decide to go with something more gothic like the little winter pixie here, she'll make snowmen from any carved pumpkins laying around. But let's just hope that you like your area entirely covered with snow. Now currently things that are not in the mod, or at least the major points that are up and coming with this, is the seasonal wars option, the, uh, the rulers in the different world trees, and the dwarven market. 
And as for the compatibility, if you're interested in seeing what different options there are, uh, the mods that I currently have the list for, that this may change as well, that have at least the option of books, if not, some of the structures might have little hidden easter eggs or special things added just by having these mods installed. I'll have those in the description down below. So I hope you enjoyed this little bit by bit on Feywild. If so, be sure to give a like, comment, subscribe, and as always, be sure to stop by, support the mischief, click the notification bell, and be sure to spread the mischief. Till next time, folks. See ya.